Okay, so hey guys, and welcome to the start of the third season in this F1 Manager Minardi Manager career mode. Now, way back at the start of the first episode, I said the aim for this series was to take Minardi to win the Drivers and Constructors Championship. I reckon this is the magical year where we can do that. We've got the best engines, brakes, electronics, two of the best drivers on the grid in the form of Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard, the best chassis, thanks to Neil Oatley, the best technical director, Ross Braun, who by himself can turn the team around. And we've got Stefano Domenicali as our commercial manager. What what isn't there? What what tell me the flaw in that plan. The, the flaw in this team. There is no flaw in this team. And Luca Padoa as the test driver who obviously spent all of last season with the dominant Ferrari team. If we can even match last year's Ferrari on pace, we should easily win this year. Now 2001, this is a turning point for Minardi. Minardi are now European Minardi, thanks to Paul Stoddart, who's now the owner and controller of Minardi F1. Now, that's fine, Paul Stoddart's a nice guy, I do like Paul Stoddart, and he's agreed to keep me as the manager of the team, because he's seen what I've done for them, and he's happy to do that, so that's fine, my job's, you know, there's no risk of me losing my job. However, he seems to think that Minardi is in some kind of financial difficulty. If you look at well, the financial report, we can't find out past year's financial data, but you could tell we were profitable, because look, we started the year with, well, we started 99 only 5 million, we're now starting 2001 with 23 million. He's made a pro projection for 2002, and he reckons we're gonna lose 15 million dollars, or close to. Now, because he says, look, he's, he's telling me the engine supply is too expensive, the brakes are too expensive, the drivers are too expensive, especially if Hakkinen wins the Drivers' Championship and then demands 15 million like he did when he was at McLaren, which is entirely possible. He's telling me that this is too high risk. And I don't believe him. I'm telling you, he says we're only going to get 50 points. Prize money from 50 points, that's a load of rubbish. We got 50 points last year, we're easily going to exceed 50 points this year. He's still telling me it's too high risk. He's telling me Hackner may demand more money down the line. He's telling me Mercedes Benz may demand more money since we're the we're their only customer for their engines. He's telling me they may demand more. I don't think he will. I I don't think they will, to be honest. And anyway, I said in ninety nine we started with just over five million in the bank. We're starting two thousand more with twenty three million. We've quadrupled our bank balance in two years. I'm saying we're going to score more than 50 points. But he's like, it's too high risk. And he said, even if you do well, there's a problem there. If you look at the contracts I arranged for this year, if we win a Constructors' Championship, we'll have to give Neil Oatley 250k, 750k to Ross Bourne, 65k to Stefano Domenicali, 2 million to Hakkinen if we win a Giles' Championship, another 2 million to David, and 750,000 to Luca Padoa. He's telling me it's too high risk. He's telling me I shouldn't have put those bonuses in the contract, but I needed to entice him in, because we needed a winning team. Now, what he said for 2002, he wants me to arrange cheaper contracts, he wants me to cut costs. No, I don't want to do that, because I, we're definitely a profitable company, a profitable team. He wants me to cut costs though, and basically, if I don't cut costs, I'm sacked. So, I'm in a dilemma here, do I make the 2002 Minardi worse, or do I just get sacked and then he'll do it anyway? So, I'm in a dilemma for 2002, but we'll move away from that. 2001, this is the main focus, so just let you guys know, that is the dilemma for 2002, because we're predicted to lose 15 million at this rate. So, yeah, that's all I can say, really. But, on to more positive news, Marco Rossi did email us saying he's happy with me managing Minardi, which is good. Paul Stoddart wasn't... Well, Paul Stoddart's happy with me as a manager, just not my financial approach, let's put it that way. But Marco Rossi's happy. He wants me to manage Minardi again, and well, so does Paul Stoddart. But anyway, objectives. He wants me to finish second or higher in the Constructors' Championship, because we finished third the last time out, just behind Williams, literally just behind Williams, thanks to that infamous Malaysian Grand Prix last time out. And behind the dominant Ferrari team. He wants me to finish second. Well, I could tell you, Marco Rossi, 
My aim is to win both the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship. And, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see how he takes to that. But anyway, pre-season testing, of course. This is the first episode, pre-season testing around Catalonia. I'm going to sign myself up for that. And, well, until that comes, we've got to see if there's any pre-season news. As well as I've got to try and work out how to cut costs to please Paul Stoddart. So, I'll do all that and I'll cut if there's any news. Okay, so already Neil Lokely has designed the second model of front wings and the second model of rear wings. And we know how amazing of a designer Neil Lokely was last year. And, well, he's, he's still on top form this year. So, I haven't even attended pre-season testing yet. I think it's coming up. In a couple of days, I think. Um, but yeah, we've got some improvements already for pre-season testing. That should help us out, well, when we get to Catalonia. Okay, so just a few days later, and AP have sent us the second model of brakes, and Magneti Morelli, the second model of electronics. So, what amazing supplies both of these are. They, they were amazing last year. I think we had a couple of electronics failures last year, to be fair. But still, both companies doing amazing for us. And again, I haven't attended pre-season testing yet, but we've got more improvements in time for that. Okay, so there is some more news, and I've just done a pre-season test day. Um, it was a very interesting day, actually. I'll show you that pre-season test results come the end of the episode, but for the time being, we got to remember Neil Oatley designed new barge boards, which I wasn't even able to use at the pre-season test, so we got to go on to manufacturing them now. Okay, so Mercedes-Benz have now given us their second model of engine, so again we're going to have a power advantage that we didn't see in pre-season tests, so yeah, things are looking good for the start of the main season already. Okay, so everything is happening on the 12th of February, because AP Racing have sent us their third model of brakes, Magneti Morelli the third model of electronics, so again this is why we have good supplies, because the car already since pre-season testing has improved a great deal in terms of the barge boards, engines, electronics and brakes. And now the front wings and rear wings because Neil Oatley already before the season even properly started has designed the third model of front wings and rear wings. So, what, what? Neil Oatley is just, he's such a good designer that really I'm moving around engineers all the time. Just move them there, and yeah, we'll have to see what news comes in with just less than a month till the season starts. Okay, another email just a few days later from Neil Oatley. The third model of barge boards just... He never, never, ever stops designing. Neil Oatley... I, I don't get how he's this good. How can he design so much in such a short space of time? To be fair, we haven't got an upgrade in suspensions yet, or... Side pods for that matter, but considering we've got the best chassis on the grid and improvements in front wings, rear wings, barge boards, just Neil Oatley's doing an amazing job. And I spoke too soon, didn't I? Because look, we got now got an upgrade in suspensions and side pods, so the whole car, but even the bits that our suppliers give to us, the whole car has improved since pre-season test day. Um, yeah, suspensions, yeah. So the whole car has improved to at, le at least one stage further in terms of, you know, all the aero parts and the brakes, electronics and engines. Uh, and we were doing, we were good in test day, let's put it that way. And we're, we're going to be even better now at this rate unless there's a team which has developed more than us, which I really doubt there is. In fact, there can't be, to be honest, and apart from possibly Jordan. Okay, so here we are for, on the 9th of March, so the day before the first Grand Prix weekend of the 2001 season is about to start, so I guess I'll show you what happened in pre-season testing. So here we are for the pre-season test day at the Circuit de Catalonia in 2001. This is the first opportunity we get to see how the grid could shape up for the upcoming season, and if these results are an accurate representation of the speed of all the teams in the 2001 season, 
then we have got a very surprising season coming up. The team that finished at the top of the test day was Minardi, with their test car being driven by their former race driver, Luca Padoa, who set that lap time on a risk everything lap. Now in 1999, Padoa wasn't often able to complete laps on risk everything, but he did here and now, showing how easy this car is to drive, as well as how blisteringly quick it is. This is also the second year running where Padoa finished at the top during pre-season testing as he managed the same feat with Ferrari last year. Anyway, as a reminder, Minardi will have the best chassis on the grid thanks to them employing Neil Oatley as their chief designer last year and since they still have him this year, Minardi will also be at the forefront of mid-season aero development. Aside from that, Minardi have a proven strong driver lineup in Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard with Luca Padoa as their test driver. They'll be using Mercedes-Benz engines, AP Racing brakes, Magneti Morelli Electronics, the hugely talented Ross Braun as their technical director, and Stefano Domenicali as their commercial manager. Second this test day is Jordan, with them being represented today by the highly experienced Johnny Herbert. The experience and talent of their test driver Johnny Herbert will have helped the team massively to get them second on the timesheets. What also would have helped is how they are using a Rory Brin chassis as he was their chief designer last year and so they will have an upper hand on everyone else other than Minardi in the chassis department. However their chief designer this year is Loke Bigoy who is nowhere near as talented as Rory Brin and so Jordan should fall behind in the mid-season aero development compared to the other teams. Jordan's drivers for the upcoming season are Jano Trulli and Pedro Della Rosa, but they are still using the highly underpowered Ford ZTEC engine, and that could explain the 5 second a lap gap between them and Minardi. As well as the fact that Jordan are using Brembo brakes and Honda PGM electronics. However, their technical director is Pat Simmons, who can definitely help out the team, as well as their commercial manager Les Olsen. Third this test date is BAR, with Owen Green as their test driver. This is an interesting result as Owen Green is nowhere near as quick as Johnny Herbert, and so the 9 tenths of a second gap between Jordan and BAR could be entirely down to the differing skills between the two drivers. So while BAR may actually be the second quickest team on the grid, they are using the third best chassis on the grid, and in fact if you look at the results this test day, the quickest team is using the best chassis, and the slowest team is using the worst chassis, showing just how important chassis are to the pace of a car. Anyway, BAR do have a very good chassis, as it is a Mark Smith chassis, and they also have a very good designer this year, in the form of Gavin Fisher, who is originally from Williams, so they should still remain competitive in the mid-season aero development race. BAR have Giancarlo Fisichella as their first driver, and the rookie Patrick Lamarie as their second driver. They're only using Petronas engines despite the issues with them last year and how they are a downgrade from their old Supertech engines. Their brakes are Brembo's, electronics are Vistian's, their technical director is the former Jordan and Minardi technical director Mike Gascoigne and their commercial manager is Rob Armstrong. Fourth here in Spain is Stuart being driven by Thomas Enger now Stewart finished 3rd last year in pre-season testing, but underperformed once the season started, and let's hope that isn't the case again this year. Stewart are using a Gavin Fisher chassis, which is the 4th best one on the grid, and they also showed promise as their two drivers are the former Minardi pairing in the form of Damon Hill and Mika Salo, who together clinched 3rd in the Constructors Championship with Minardi, so that could spell good things for Stewart this year. They also have the former Minardi commercial manager, Massimo Cusimano, who is able to help Minardi get into the strong financial position they find themselves in now. However, their chief designer this year is Nick Worth, who isn't anywhere near as good as Gavin Fisher. They are still using Peugeot engines despite their shortcomings last year in terms of power and supply. Their brakes are AP Racing, their electronics are Vistians, and their technical director is Leo Ress. How the mighty have fallen, with Ferrari way down in 5th. Their test driver is Tor Takaki, who has a lot of race experience within Formula 1, 
and with the Williams team no less, so it is unlikely that it was his performance that cost Ferrari so much time today. What did cost him a lot of time was the downgrade from a Rory Brin chassis last year to a Nick Worth chassis this year, which is very mediocre compared to the others on the grid. However, they do have Rory Brin as their designer this year, so they will be leading the mid-season aero development race and getting faster compared to every other team as the season goes on. They are still using their very powerful Ferrari engines and arguably have the strongest driver lineup on the grid with Michael Schumacher and Heinz Held Frentzen. And they also have the hugely talented technical director Adrian Newey. They're also using Brembo brakes, Magneti Morelli electronics, and their commercial manager is Ian Phillips. Again, how the mighty have fallen, with Luciano Berti driving the Williams, but only to 6th place. This performance drop off could be due to a downgraded chassis from the previous years, as their chassis is designed by Logue Bigoy. However, with their designer this year being the former Minardi designer, Gabriel Tredozzi, and with Tredozzi being the weak link for Minardi in previous years, this may not be a strong season aerodynamically for Williams. They have some very good supplied parts with AP Racing Brakes and Magneti Morelli Electronics, and with them sticking with the Supertech engines cleverly, unlike other teams, means they do still have some hope compared to other teams which have poorly supplied parts, such as BAR and Jordan. Their two race drivers controversially are Stephen Watson and Ralph Schumacher, their technical director is Bernard Duo, and their commercial manager is Richard West. Now way down in 7th we've got the team which was the quickest in 99 and still came 2nd last year in pre-season testing despite how they underperformed once the season actually started. And then this year, despite all the racing experience their test driver Ricardo Zonta has in comparison to many other test drivers here, he couldn't do much with the McLaren here in Spain. This could be down to the Andy LaFleming chassis they are using, which is nowhere near as good as the Neil Oatley chassis they used in 99 and even in 2000. Maybe it's also the use of TAG Electronics and Ford Z-Tech engines, and only having Mike Coughlin as their technical director. While they do have a strong race driver lineup in the form of Jacques Villeneuve and Eddie Irvine, and AP Racing Brakes, but with them still having Andy LaFleming as their chief designer, they won't be doing well in the mid-season aero development race as well compared to other teams. Finally, their commercial manager is David Warren, who caps off a very mediocre McLaren team which could slip down the field even more than we saw them do last year. Eighth this test date is a very disappointing result for Bruno Jonquera and the Benetton team, who even got a couple of race wins last year courtesy of David Coulthard. However, with them using a Rob Taylor chassis this year, they won't be at the forefront of the field like they were on occasion last year. They have also downgraded on engine performance from a Supertech engine last year to a Petronas engine this year, despite Petronas' lack of supply at the end of the season that we saw in 2000. However, they do have Patrick Head as their technical director, who should help out the team a lot, as well as their driver number one, who is Rubens Barrichello. The driver 2 is the largely inexperienced driver in Formula 1, Stephanie Cesarin. They're also using Brembo brakes, Honda PGM electronics. Their chief designer this year is still Rob Taylor, much like last year, and the commercial manager is Jim Wright. Right down the back end of the field is a usual place for the Sauber team, as they finished 9th this pre-season test day, with Nick Heidfeld at the helm. They had Gabriel Giudosi as their chief designer last year, and his poor chassis design, which gave Minardi a performance blow last year, is doing the same thing to Salva this year. Their two race drivers are Alexander Wurtz and Pedro Diniz. They're still using Petronas engines despite the issues they had with them since 1999. Their brakes are Brembo's, their electronics are Magneti Morelli's. Their chief designer this year is Andrew Tilly, who was their designer back in 1999, and is marginally better than Gabriel Giudosi. Their technical director is Malcolm Osler, and their commercial manager is Marco Fessa. Tenth this test date is a massive achievement for the Arrows team, as this may be their first season this century where they won't finish last in the Constructors' Championship. 
and their test driver here is the former Minardi test driver, Gaston Mazzucane. Despite still insisting on using their own built engines and using Tega Electronics, they do have the very good AP Racing brakes. Their chief designer last year was Andrew Tilly, a former Sauber designer who has developed an improved chassis over their previous year's chassis. However, the amazing news is that their chief designer this year is Mark Smith, the third best designer in Formula 1. This means they will be at the sharp end of mid-season aerodynamic development and will have the third best chassis in 2002. All of that, mixed with Jean Lacy and Marc Genet as their two race drivers, Gary Anderson as their technical director and Ekrim Sami as their commercial manager, means that Arrows have a promising couple of years ahead of them. A team that doesn't look to have a promising couple of years ahead of them is the Prost team who finished last this pre-season test day, with their test driver being the former BAR race driver, Laurent Redon. This drop in pace is due to their chief designer they had last year, and also have again this year, Andrew Green. While Andrew Green has 100 morale, he has the lowest design and chassis skill of any Formula 1 designer, and that means Prost have the worst chassis on the grid. That in combination with a very underpowered Ford ZTEC engine, slower than their old Peugeot engine, and with them using only TAG electronics and Brembo brakes, means that Prost have a worryingly uncompetitive season ahead of them. Especially as their driver number one is Alessandro Zanardi, who has underperformed at both Williams in 1999 and Sauber in 2000, and in 2000 he was often the slowest driver apart from the two arrows drivers. The driver number two is Olivier Panis, who luckily did spend all of last year testing with McLaren, and that could help Prost with his experiences there. Their technical director is the former Minardi technical director, Gustav Brunner, and their commercial manager is Herb Bodinier. So here are the complete pre-season testing results on screen, and what an insight into the 2001 season this has been. Minardi have been truly dominant with a 5 second a lap lead over 2nd place Jordan. But can BAR top Jordan once you remove the hugely differing talents of Johnny Herbert and Irwin Green? Can Stewart maintain their good form in pre-season testing unlike last year? And what about the former giants of Ferrari, Williams, McLaren and Benetton? Can they improve on their pre-season performance once the season starts? Williams last year in pre-season testing finished way down in 7th, but still finished second in the Constructors' Championship at the end of the year. So can any of these four big teams accomplish a similar story this year? And Arrows, can they improve in last year's performance and not finish last in the Constructors' Championship this year? Many questions are raised on pre-season testing, which will all soon be answered once the season starts at Albert Park in Australia. So there you go guys, that was pre-season testing, an amazing job we did there, 5 seconds clear of Jordan, that's, that's dominance, that is absolute dominance, and obviously they're not going to have the engine developments that we will, because obviously they're using Ford ZTEX, we used Ford ZTEX back in 99, we know we didn't get many developments, I think there were only 3 models of engine, which only upgraded 1 each time, so they, I think they started rated 87, then 88, then 89, so there are only three models, only three upgrades, and the third model of Ford ZTEC engine was rated 89, the first model of Mercedes-Benz engine am I right, is rated 91, yeah, no, 93, so there's a four difference between the best and the worst of Mercedes, and we hardly ever used the first model engines, we pretty much only ever used the second, third and fourth during the course of the season. But anyway, Australian Grand Prix, I'm looking forward to this. We could see a Minardi 1-2, we still have yet to see that. We damn nearly saw it at Monza last year, and if the Jordans were just a little bit slower, we would have seen it at San Marino last year. And as we saw from pre-season testing, Jordans may, the Jordan team may well be our biggest rivals this season, much like they were during the first half of last season, but then again, BAR, they may well rise up from the ashes, which, but they started as a brand new team when I started managing, and 
They may well do something amazing, because obviously Owen Green, a poor driver, well, arguably a poor driver, but, and finish third of them. Anyway, I've already analysed pre-season testing, that's Australian Grand Prix Albert Park, I'm looking forward to it, it's going to be a phenomenal race, so I hope you guys tune in for the start of Season 3, and despite the fact we got Paul Stoddart looming over us, and to be fair, it's a fair point, we've lost 9 million since the start of 2001, we should be able to recoup quite a bit of that money at Albert Park if we have a strong race, and hopefully if we can impress Paul Stoddart at his home race, then everything's going to go well. So I'll see you for the start of Season 3. So I'll see you then.